We have talked about what Roe v. Wade protects. Today, as of right now, as of this minute, we can only talk about what Roe v. Wade protected. Past tense. This is a health care crisis. Because understand, millions of women in America will go to bed tonight without access to the health care and reproductive care that they had this morning. Without access to the same health care or reproductive health care that their mothers and grandmothers had for 50 years. This opinion also says when you read it that abortion is not deeply rooted in our nation's history. Today's decision on that theory, then, calls into question other rights that we thought were settled, such as the right to use birth control, the right to same-sex marriage, the right to interracial marriage. You have the power to elect leaders who will defend and protect your rights. And as the president said earlier today, with your vote, you can act. And you have the final word. Kamala Harris encourages Christians to support abortion while maintaining their faith. But the speaker emphasizes serving a wrathful God and states that righteousness and godliness are the only true evidence of being a believer. This highlights a stark contrast between Harris's advocacy and the speaker's insistence on strict adherence to traditional religious values and the demonstration of faith through moral and righteous living. I think all of us share um, a deep sense of outrage that the United States Supreme Court took a constitutional right that was recognized, took it from the women of America. We are now looking at a case where the government can interfere in what is one of the most intimate and private decisions that someone can make. What will this administration do to try in the coming months before the election yeah. to codify Roe, to try to, through Congress, put into law some of these priorities? The president acted this morning again with an executive order but we also need Congress to act because that branch of government is where we actually codify, which means put into law the rights that, again, we took for granted, but clearly have now been taken from the women of America. And that does have to happen, and we should not allow ourselves to, to minimize the significance of that, which is Congress needs to act. Some senators have suggested that Justice Gorsuch, Justice Kavanaugh misled them during the confirmation hearings on Roe v. Wade. Some Democrats have even called for those justices to be impeached. Do you believe they should be impeached? I mean, listen, I start from um, the point of experience of having served in the Senate. I never believed them. Now, who in the world? can match that. That's why I say to all my enemies that are watching, who constantly give a thumbs down, I thank God for your hell-bound soul. Amen. You that are hollering and yelling over this message, I thank God for you, because you're back again. Back again. As one fellow said that the Bible is more in aligned with uh, conservative Republicans than with anybody else, you old fool. Absolutely. God ain't in line with no political party. Right. God is in line with himself. That's right. My thoughts are not your thoughts. God don't think like you. Isaiah 55 and verse 8. My thoughts are not your thoughts. Another one who don't like for me to talk about 
the condition of the politicians in the world said, Pastor Jennings, oh, we see he got a hidden agenda now mm. because he keeps preaching against the politicians. We can see where he's really trying to encourage people to vote for Biden and Harris. I don't care if you vote for a dog or a donkey. That's right. Biden and Harris don't obey God. They're going to hell with Trump. <laughs> That's right. I'm not a Democrat preacher or Republican preacher. I'm a holiness preacher here. That's right. There's been some controversy surrounding Taylor Swift's political comments and her stance on what she considers Tennessee Christian values. This stems from a viral video clip originating from her 2020 Netflix documentary, Miss Americana, where Swift expresses her discontent with then Senate candidate Marsha Blackburn's policies, particularly on women's and LGBTQ rights. Taylor Swift stated that she couldn't support Blackburn's views being disguised as Tennessee's Christian values, asserting that those weren't the values she, as a Christian living in Tennessee, contrary to some social media claims. Swift's remarks were not primarily focused on Donald Trump, but rather on her opposition to Blackburn and her decision to endorse Democratic candidate Phil Bredesen in the 2018 Senate race. The clip was shared out of context, leading to misinterpretations about her stance on Trump. Taylor Swift has been vocal about her support for progressive causes, including Algebud Kuk rights, which has drawn both support and criticism from various Christian communities. Her advocacy has been seen as a challenge to traditional Christian values by some, while others applaud her for speaking out on social justice issues. If, if you continue in the faith, Do you hear this? in Colossians chapter 1 and verse 23. If what? Begin at verse 20. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 20. Follow me. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, uh -huh. by him to reconcile all things unto himself. Yeah. By him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. Uh -huh. And you that was sometime alienated. You yeah. that was sometime alienated. Alienated. And enemies in your mind. What kind of mind we had towards God? Enemies in your mind. You know, what, you know what an alien is? I'm not talking about a UFO. That's right. You know, when you're an illegal citizen, you're considered an alien. Yeah. That's right. And in order for you to be a citizen of that country, you have to get your citizenship. That's right. right. Well, God wants you to be a citizen in the church. That's right. There are requirements for you to have your citizenship. That's right. Amen. You have to hear the word of God, then repent of your right. sins. Be baptized in the water in the name of Jesus Christ and then keep around the teaching of God. That's it. You're not a citizen yet. That's right. Even though you repented, you've been baptized in the water in the name of the Lord Jesus, but you're not a citizen yet. You're still working yeah. on your citizenship. That's right. Amen. True Christians often face mockery and opposition from the broader culture, but they are called to stand firm in their faith, challenge cultural norms, and boldly proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. This call to steadfastness is rooted in scripture, where believers are encouraged to remain faithful despite persecution and to be a light in the world. The Bible is replete with exhortations to remain steadfast. In 1 Peter 4, 14, 16, believers are told that being insulted for the name of Christ is a blessing because it means the spirit of glory and of God rests on them. Similarly, in James 1, 12, those who persevere under trial are promised the crown of life. Throughout history, many Christians have faced persecution and ridicule for their faith. Figures like the apostles, early church martyrs, and reformers such as Martin Luther, such as Martin Luther, stood firm despite immense cultural and political pressure. Christians are called to live in a way that contrasts with the prevailing cultural norms. Romans 12.2 advises believers not to conform to the pattern of this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of their minds. This transformation often puts Christians at odds with societal values that contradict biblical teachings. While challenging cultural norms, it is essential to do so with love and respect. Ephesians 4.15 emphasizes speaking the truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ. Jesus' command in Matthew 28, 19, 20 to go and make disciples of all nations is a mandate for Christians to proclaim the gospel boldly, regardless of the cultural climate. This proclamation involves both word and deed, living out the teachings of Jesus authentically. Acts 
1, 8 highlights that believers will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon them, enabling them to be witnesses in all parts of the world. This divine empowerment helps Christians to stand firm and speak boldly. In today's world, Christians may face mockery for their beliefs on issues such as sexuality, sanctity of life, and religious liberty. Remaining true to biblical convictions requires courage and the support of a faith community. Prominent Christians who take a stand on morale and ethical issues often become targets of ridicule. Despite this, their witness can inspire and embolden others in the faith community to also stand firm and speak out. By remaining steadfast in faith, challenging cultural norms with love and truth, and boldly proclaiming the gospel, Christians can fulfill their calling to be salt and light in a world that often opposes their message.